Welcome to I'm Mr. Mark and I'm Bosch. So uh, I'm I'm Chatan, I'm an engineer, I work at Large, <coughs> uh, Pivotal uh, in London. I work as a software engineer. I'm currently trying to solve the problem of uh, packing and storing the platform. But today I'm here to talk about something else. Uh, I'm here to talk about the problem of deploying a software across multiple cloud providers. Uh, what do I mean by that? So deploying, or making a deployment in which one component is on a cloud provider like AWS and another component is on another, another cloud provider like vSphere. More specifically, I'm going to talk about how you could do that with the side project that I was working on, which is the BoschMet CPI. So this is this plugs into the CPI interface for Bosch to essentially enable you to do multi-cloud deployments. So the goal of this talk is to highlight the possibilities of multi-cloud deployments um, and how it could be achieved using this project that we <coughs> and Bosch. So yeah, so this, this talk is divided into four unequal parts. We are going to look at Bosch for a while uh, and look at, see how the CPI interface works. After that, uh, we are going to talk, like I want to introduce a better CPI project and how that works. We'll look at some use cases which might include some demos of deployments across uh, multiple cloud providers and after that discuss some problems. So yeah, Bosch, I guess it's very familiar to this crowd. It defines itself like this. Uh, it's a deployment orchestration and release management tool. It also does infrastructure provisioning for you. Uh, it's like the most common way of deploying Cloud Foundry. So it's, it's very popular in the Cloud Foundry community for that reason. Uh, we at Pivotal use Bosch quite extensively. So we use it to manage tools like Concourse. And we also use it, uh, like especially the things that I work with, to manage uh, data services with Cloud Foundry. Uh, for this talk, we are specifically interested in <coughs> the release management, uh, sorry, the deployment aspect of Bosch and how it creates instances for you. So let's see how does the interface, uh, how does the Bosch interface look like for an operator? Or so imagine that you are an operator trying to like deploy software and this is the olden days and uh, Cloud Foundry does not exist, so no CF push. Uh, like you, you have just received like some software from your from your developers and your support <coughs> provision. So how do you interact with the Bosch uh, director to do this requirement? So the first thing that you do with Bosch is upload something called as a stem cell. A stem cell is a bare bones operating system image which contains just the operating system that needs to run on that particular IaaS. It also has some IaaS specific metadata. So a stem cell on AWS is an AMI. A stem cell on vSphere is an IaaS, so I don't know what it is on vSphere. Uh, so something which is IaaS specific, which is essentially a disk image that can start up an instance, right? So the second thing that you do with Bosch is you upload a release. <coughs> a release is your software packaged in a certain way. So, like there are, as you might know, that there are Cloud Foundry releases that go on Bosch. So, like the code that you have, your developers have given you, you can convert them into releases and give them to Bosch. So, Bosch knows how to restart your software if the software dies, and it knows how to check if the software is alive. What you do after that is you essentially go on your infrastructure provider and create some resources. So, if you have, a look, uh, if you are talking about AWS specifically, you'll probably go and create some subnets and some, uh, like you, you typically create a virtual cloud <coughs> on AWS. And these, these uh, resources you create independent of Bosch. And then you compose what is called as a Bosch manifest. So this, this manifest tells Bosch what the deployment should look like. So in, in our case, say that you want to deploy an Nginx server, a MySQL, and like two Linux servers for your app to run. And you also put in references for the resources that you have created on, on, the, on the IS into this manifest, so Bosch knows where to put this, these things that you will create. And when you give this deployment manifest to the Bosch director, it will make it so. So it will essentially converge your infrastructure 
to that deployment manifest. So whatever machines are missing, we will create them. If there is a machine that is running and it is not present in the deployment manifest anymore, we will delete it. So it's, a, it's it allows you to create a manifest which is an exact like which defines what the machines are in your deployment. So you could do this workflow, the workflow that we just discussed about stem cells will do this and manifest with the core stack. You can do this today on AWS, VMware, OpenStack, and Azure. And your your workflow as an operator remains the same through you on all of these providers. So the reason for that is Bosch defines uh, a cloud <coughs> provider interface, an uh, interface through which uh, cloud providers can have Bosch interact with it. So this is what the interface is essentially. This is the interface. So these are 18 odd methods that are defined that translate uh, Bosch specific calls into IS specific calls. So this implementation wise, this is implemented as a command line binary. And this is put on the same box or the same machine on which Bosch is running. And uh, so this, this, uh, these methods essentially create resources on your cloud and give back identifiers to Bosch to track those resources. Yes, uh, you mentioned that you have to set up your VPC, your subnets, and so on by hand, manually, uh, uh, beforehand. Why, is that? Why uh, does the manifest uh, um, uh, allow you to specify those uh, resources as well? Is there a reason for that? No. Uh, like, so this is the, I'm describing the current state of the world, right? Like, so I'm, I don't know the historical reason why exactly it is like that. So you could have, uh, like, if you enhance the interface to even have create VPCs, could probably do that, but probably there is no unified interface across IS providers. That's why there is none. I don't know this answer. Okay. So, all right. So the the CPI is has like like 18 odd methods that I was saying, and it, it returns cloud identifiers to uh, for Bosch to track the task, uh, track the resources that it creates. So let's look at a flow on how the Bosch director interacts with your cloud on say AWS. So if you like, we will just go through the operator flow again. So the first thing that you do is create a stem cell. So when you say create stem cell to the AWS CPI, which is a CPI primitive on the, uh, on the C, which is a CPI primitive, this AWS CPI is now responsible for translating this create stem cell call into an equivalent call on AWS. So the AWS CPI does a lot of things internally, and the last call that it invokes is the create volume call, the create volume API call on AWS, which will create essentially an uh, AMI. So the AWS then returns an uh, AMI ID, which it then passes on to Bosch. And so whenever Bosch wants to create a new resource with that AMI or create a new instance, it will essentially refer to that image using that cloud identifier it got from the AWS API last time. For example, now you want to actually create a VM, so use the create VM CPI primitive. Bosch uses this create VM CPI primitive, which then gets translated into a AWS specific, a specific API, which happens to be run instance with that, with that uh, AMI ID. So it will essentially start an instance on that image. So as you can imagine, then it, the AWS API then returns a uh, identifier which tracks that instance after it has started it. So whenever the Bosch collector wants to say tag that instance or kill that instance, it will use that identifier. So currently, only one of these cloud providers can be specified with Bosch. Uh, the way that people do multi-cloud deployments today with, for stuff like Cloud Foundry, Essentially, they have two separate Bosch directors on each of the IISs. So you have an AWS IIS and an Azure IIS, and you have two separate directors, and you compose two separate manifests, and then you manually converge them by yourself. Like, so you push to this director, and then you push to that director. And so, what if you wanted only one Bosch director to manage multiple cloud providers? Well, this is the right talk. Uh, inter introducing uh, the Meta CPI. So Meta CPI is uh, a concept project that I was working on on the side. 
So this allows you to deploy multiple cloud provider interfaces on the same director. And then the multi-thread CPR essentially acts as a router between those uh, cloud provider interfaces so that it can translate the, if, uh, the CPI calls like we saw to multiple cloud providers. So it does this by two, two main things. So it does this by inspecting the stem cell metadata to figure out which cloud provider the stem cell is for. And it works by tracking the cloud ID that it gets from the API so that it can route <coughs> uh, back to the right place. So let's take an example of that. So this is our setup now. So before there was just the Bosch director and the CPI and uh, API server. So now is that boiled down to there is a Bosch director, there's this new meta CPI thingy, like multiple CPIs that you want. So we have a AWS CPI and Azure CPI, which then interact with their uh, cloud. Uh, so when you when there is a create stem cell request to the meta CPI, meta CPI will inspect the stem cell and understand that. Uh, that stem cell is for the AWS CPI, for example, because as we mentioned before, C uh, stem cells are uh, CPI specific. Uh, they are created for a particular cloud provider. Uh, after that, the AWS CPI will return it, as we saw before, a cloud identifier for that image, which will, the meta CPI will now record that cloud identifier and know that it had come from AWS and then forward that request again. So for example, we upload a different stem cell. So this time it's the uh, Azure stem cell. So this request is forwarded to Azure. Azure returns it a cloud identifier for that stem cell. And that stem cell, that is now recorded in the store of the Meta CPI saying that uh, that stem cell is from Azure. So now subsequently, when we get a create stem cell request, for like or Bosch will refer to a particular uh, cloud provider, the cloud ID that it got. The Meta CPI will know that it's for a particular cloud from looking at its uh, storage, and it will make that uh, request on a particular uh, on the cloud provider that it got that resource from. So this happens to be AWS. Then the AWS API will, as we saw before, will give it uh, instance ID which it will track again, so it will keep a track of the instance ID. And all subsequent happen, well, actions that happen on that instance, for example, if there is a tag instance action that happens on that instance, the Meta CPI will know by its lookup table that it should forward that request to the AWS CPI. So this is kind of how it works. All right, so the next section is a bit more intense. So how do you actually, uh, <laughs> configure this in your manifest today. So this is this is how uh, a Bosch director's manifest really redacted looks like today. So as you can imagine, what do you deploy the Bosch director by? Another Bosch. Uh, so you have the Bosch release, and today you put in co-locate the AWS CPI release, and then you tell the director that the CPI that you want to use to provision machines is the AWS CPI. So this is how it looks like today. In the better CPLS case, you will essentially deploy the Bosch director, deploy the other CPIs that you want, and deploy the meta CPI. Tell the director that you would like, actually like to point to the meta CPI. And in the meta CPI's properties, you can tell the meta CPI about all the available CPIs on that machine. So you could give the parts of different cloud provider interfaces that exist that you have deployed on the same machine. So how does a job definition look like? Uh, so this is a job definition in your deployment that you are trying to make. So we have already look, looked at how the YAML looks like for the what director itself. So how can you configure the, uh, the deployments that you are going to do on the metal director? So like uh, as everything over here is based on stem cells, so we have to, as uh, normally you would define a particular stem cell that you want to deploy to, now you define multiple stem cells, and when you define a job, you the stem cell determines which which infrastructure it will be deployed to. So you also give it a VM type and a network type. So right now there is no validation to check that uh, the network that you are 
deploying to actually belongs to that particular IS, it would just straight away deploy and the, the underlying IS will throw an error because, because it does not know of that network. Uh, so the, to help with essentially uh, creating VM types that are applicable across the cloud, uh, across cloud providers, the Meta CPA also supports like what I call Meta cloud definitions. So this is what a typical cloud definition look like, uh, looks like today. So there is a VM type which is called a small VM and in the cloud properties you give an instance type of T2 micro. So this is how it life looks like today in Bosch. So you tell a small is essentially a T2 micro and it would be deployed on that AWA, uh, that availability zone. On the Meta CPI what you could do is like the VM type in small and in the cloud properties, there is now a meta block in which you specify on Azure, a small looks like a standard A2 and uh, on AWS, a small looks like a T2 micro. <coughs> so similarly for networks, uh, this is how a typical AWS network will look like in your cloud config today. Uh, so you will have, you will define AWS network and say that this is a particular subnet that you are targeting like that that is the subnet that this network refers to and that those are the IP ranges. Similar to VM types, in the Meta, the Meta CPI also allows like Meta blocks for uh, VM, uh, networks. So you can say that in Azure, like the network called compilation on Azure should go to Azure VNet and on AWS should go to subnet ID AFFD, whatever that is. So this is how you can define like define network types and VM types that are applicable across multiple cloud providers. <laughs> All right, so that's the end of YAML. That's what we have <laughs> most of the people. Uh, All right, to, to conclude, uh, the Meta CPI uh, is a project uh, which essentially acts as a router between multiple cloud providers. It can deploy them in parallel. Uh, on a machine and then act essentially as a switch between those. <coughs> it allows to it, reads the cloud, uh, the cloud. it also tracks the cloud IDs that come out from uh, those CPIs so that it can route it route the subsequent requests correctly back to the same cloud provider. Uh, and it provides special configuration blocks so that you can configure uh, uh, configure VM types which are applicable across cloud providers. Now, the use cases. So the most obvious use case of course is doing multi-cloud deployment, which means that before you you had like a Bosch director on both the both the sites or both the ISs, now you can have a deployment in which you have only one Bosch director which is sitting on either side. You connect those two VPNs by a tunnel of some sort. You have an AWS instance and an Azure instance, and you load balance it by external load balancer. Yeah. But this VPN is not part of your configuration. You're not yet. That yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So just like you do networks currently, you have to do uh, <coughs> uh, the network, the VPN tunnel. Okay. Good. So, so for this demo, uh, it's really simple. So, what I have deployed is a watch find location release. Uh, so, it is a simple release which just spits out the location of where where that is being run. Uh, I have two stem cells as I described. Uh, the release is the current location release and if you go down, you I have defined two <coughs> jobs. Uh, the network, in, in the network definition for the job, you can see that I have assigned the Azure job a static IP in Azure and like in the normal Azure network and so this is on the Azure side with the Azure stem cell and with only one VM definition on the AWS side, it uses the AWS network and has a static IP on the AWS side. If you look at the cloud config for this, the AWS network is 
is a old style network you can say which is, which is which is just tracking one subnet so one of those machines will be deployed to that subnet and the azure network is also like the old style wash uh, wash network definition which is tra tracking a subnet called subnet one on wash or uh, on azure the vm type is actually the, using the new meta structure so there is just one vm definition with uh, with specifications written for AWS and Azure. <coughs> and I actually did not have a load balancer at hand, so I'm just creating a hacky load balancer with Nginx. So I'm essentially putting both those IPs in Nginx so that it will load balance over it. So if you, uh, our app, so right now we, we can see the settings in uh, my AWS account, in my AWS account. I have my director hanging out there, and I have a gateway essentially, so that that machine over there, AWS to Azure Gateway, is forwarding all the traffic in that subnet to the to the Azure network. On the Azure network, I've used one of the templates that are available online to to essentially do a side to side connection. So I have a VPC gateway which which is receiving traffic <coughs> and sending traffic back from the subnets in Azure to the other side my local host is not loading because the deployment is not done yet. So if I go to my terminal and do a watch deployment, moving magic. Right. Oh, yeah. So and if we refresh our AWS console, what we see is an AWS machine is coming up on the AWS side. So this is our machine that is starting up. And on on Azure, if you refresh, you also see a uh, Azure machine being created on the Azure side by the single deployment, a single wash deploy. Yeah. So after four minutes, it will all be done. And if I hit my word balancer, I would have traffic essentially balanced across to uh, cloud provider, so you have the AWS uh, cloud provider with that IP and Dublin, which is no, that the first one is actually Azure and Dublin. So the other, so the other thing that you could do is run errands in Garden Container. So currently, you uh, when you run errands, which are one-off job uh, wash tasks, wash will essentially start an instance for you and run that code in that instance and delete that instance later. The things that we typically do in errands are really small, so which is like registering a broker or cloud foundry, so that they can essentially run in Garden Containers. With Garden, garden is the, uh, the, the container runtime for Cloud Foundry, which there is a CPI written on top of it. So we can deploy the Garden CPI, the Garden software, and the AWS CPI, and have a deployment which, in which some components can run in containers and some components can run on real virtual machines. So, I don't know that. <laughs> So this is this is just demoing errands. So oh wait, this is everything is sped up eight times. So we have two Bosch errands. One is just saying hello on AWS. The other is saying hello on Warden. So when you run the AWS errand, it's actually spinning up an instance for you to do the task. And it will it will complete after some time. And delete the 
when you can see, so all of these are very staged, and like the actual work that was done was essentially done in that one second, which was saying a lot. Alright, and then as you can see, right, it completed in three minutes, and the the second errand is is just being run and on board. Oh, you must have. <laughs> So yeah, that, that was done in 26 seconds, so it just spin up a container, ran the software that it wants to run, and then spun down the container. So uh, containers are really useful for stuff like that. So the other use case is essentially, the, the one that, that interests me the most is cloud hosting, in which you have a user deployment, like you have a, a wash deploy, uh, a watch deployment on your vSphere environment, uh, vSphere as it's uh, on your premise, you cannot expand it like a cloud. If you want to burst or if you have some seasonal capacity overheads in which you want more capacity just for that season, you could use a public cloud like Azure, VPN tunnel from your vSphere deployment to Azure and run specific, the additional capacity VMs on Azure, there's no demo for that yet. Uh, the other, the other, the other one that interests me is uh, how can you do, how can you use specialized hardware on specific ISs? So AWS has this really insane machines which are like 8x large, which are really nice for like mining bitcoins or doing data science, uh, mm -hmm. and which you could spin up just uh, like for your one-off use cases rather than just go on AWS to use one specific instance. You could run a normal cluster of your own on your premise and just go to AWS for things that you need. So caveats, so of course like the elephant in the room for this kind of things is network latency between uh, AWS and Azure. Uh, so when I measured it, it was around eight times slower to send traffic between AWS instances and send <coughs> between an AWS and Azure instances. Uh, so that's why application awareness is very important. For example, if you deploy Cloud Foundry on such setup today, like if you have two routers on AWS and Azure, and the able nodes distributed across them, it will actually forward traffic down into one AWS provider through the through the virtual uh, through the tunnel to the other side to handle 50% of the request because the routers don't know which nodes are closest to them. That's why application awareness is really important in this kind of scenarios. It's fine for doing one-time deployment. So if you do a deployment and then it can run on its own on the other other cloud provider, it's all good. But if you if you need to communicate on the request basis, this is bad. So application should be smart enough to uh, work in this in these scenarios. Security is just a placeholder over there. Uh, VPCs are kind of a solved problem. It just provides like one more mobile component in your infrastructure. So now you have to take care of your Tunnel key, which is like one of the most important important components for you now. And of course, there are some caveats of the uh, uh, meta CPI. Meta CPI is still out of uh, no <laughs> for support for AZs yet. Like the meta AZs are not supported. Meta disks are not supported. Compilation must be done on dynamic networks, like terms and conditions. But so that's that's all I have to say about that. Yes. Uh, can you show? Sorry, I might have missed the bit where like. You had me where you said, hey, you can run errands on the garden, and that's awesome. So what, what does an example of Bosch manifest look like? I looked at your repo, and it shows how to deploy Bosch with all the CPIs. Yeah, I can, I can show you that. Of, uh... So... Because we've been deploying Bosch lights with Bosch, yeah. and, and it never occurred to me that, hey, why don't you also have another CPI that can do some real work? but then you can run little jobs locally. Yeah, so, like, I have to find the code right now and open it. So can I, can we take this offline? It would be much easier to just tell you that. And can, I will, put, can you put it in the repo? Yeah, the sure. Answers. So I will, I will add that manifest to the repo as well. Uh, yeah, so the repo lives, lives here. If you are interested in this approach, do contribute and I'm open to taking in contributions for that. If you do any deployments with this CPI, uh, like 
and if you want to put your sample manifest here, I'm also open to that, including mine. I know. Are you going to just it? Why don't you put in, a, in an error and decide which CPI you just say? Uh, the stem cell. You say stem cell network, so you create oh, okay. CPI. Oh, yes, but you just do it on stem cell. So if it's next yeah. on stem cell, okay. Oh. So is there any way to automate the placement of your workloads based on things like monitoring or resource usage or any other kind of metrics? Well, <coughs> the, the CPI, like not this, I, I feel that is not in the scope of this particular project. So this is really to distribute requests between, like the VM creation requests between your cloud providers. Okay. That is really at the higher level, like, like in which you understand what the application is doing and know like you want more instances of this application on your side. Yeah, so you have to dynamically build the manifest. Yeah. Well, what is the future of this work? Is that this black being productive? Is it a product or is it just a product? Oh, so this is not a product yet, so this is open source, you can use it. But is it black? Is it part of some future of the product? No, not yet. No, <laughs> it, it won't be part of the product. <laughs> Yes. Is there tricks to deploy to multiple open stack instances, same stem cells? But yeah, I have, uh, I have had that question before, especially on AWS as well. No, I, I don't know of a way, a nice way that you could do that. What's the question, sir? Uh, how could you deploy to multiple open stack instances with this? We could, I mean, if we want to play with it, we could come up, we could just cut the stem cells and give them the name. Yeah. And fetch the metadata from the stem cell metadata, right? Yeah. So, so stem cell, like so, stem cell is nothing but a star G set. You can open it in your whatever uh, and change the metadata file. But it won't be the one that is published by the Bosch team, right? So it's not ideal. So you can hack around it. Or ideal. We could add like a. Well, we just want to start building on your thing. We could. <laughs> if you just find the stem cell, perhaps we could add another little piece of data. Back to the merits, CPI pickup, just the help guide. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes. How is state managed by the uh, multiple CPI, the eye tracking? Yeah, so the, the state right now is it just goes in a JSON file, which is locked. So this ideally should go in the database. So it, <laughs> this can share the database that Bosch uses. And you are not intending to, like how do you do version management, like how, how can I get stuff, like is there something, if I, if I want to have two stem cells or support two versions of two, two of stem cells right now, is that, how is that, how is that just offered in the future? So if that is still possible, right, like so you can just do that workflow as it is in Bosch, so Bosch already has a, a way to manage stem cell versions, right, that won't change with this API, okay. this will just know that this particular stem cell is for that provider. Yeah.